The other thing too people don't think about when they when they think about heat and vibration. Part of my background is harmonics. And I've worked in the past where harmonics made or you know, you either you are either good or you're bad and failure was you weren't in production. But when this barrel starts to heat and it's going through vibration, as it heats, its vibrational attributes will change. Heat changes the metal's vibrational points. Not only moving the frequency, but also allowing other frequency nodes to start rising in place at another point. Further changing. Conventionally designed barrels, that's a big problem. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing too that vibration creates as a secondary is heat. All vibration creates heat. Yeah, we're discussing that in the car on the way back from that barbecue place there <laughs> about uh, how actually it's part of that shock wave that goes through the monolithic structure of a conventional rifle barrel that produces a lot of the thermal energy. It's just the flexing of the steel matrix. Oh, yes. And that's what produces a lot of the thermal energy in the barrel and builds it up. And then when the heat builds up, you have thermal embrittlement and then the mechanical boil erosion takes over and really kills it. Two mils right? Yep. Sending. Where's uh there's a hundred It didn't jump around or nothing? It didn't jump yeah. around. I didn't get any lift. No rise. I mean I was able to see the target a hundred percent of the time. It felt amazing. Okay, as far as the, the patterning on the chamber area, the actual cores come down and end approximately one and a half to two inches before the end of the, of the brass case. Therefore, we're looking to keep the maximum material in place for the explosive event. Behind it, I don't need that, I don't need that full mass, but by coring it, I have removed weight, increased surface area, but I still have the original diameter. It is still extremely strong, still extremely rigid for its size. You feel it's different. Yes, it's different. You feel it, it's, it doesn't whip, doesn't jump. It's there, you just feel poof. Theoretically speaking, it doesn't really have a harmonic node. So every load that we've put through this uh, during the load development phase, every single load was sub half minute. We switched over to factory ammo with this thing and the point of impact shift wasn't even a click. So a completely different point, completely different powder, completely different velocity, and our point of impact didn't even deviate by half a minute. Center, dead center. That's a hit. Okay, we're at. Uh, I think it's centered on the on the bottom half. What's your dope right there, brother? Okay, twenty-three point eight. Okay. I took three out of the way. Actually, let's do 20, let's do uh, 23.9. Okay, 23.9. Yes. Now we had like three hits in a row. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know we got a pretty good yep. cone going okay. there. Okay, so 23.9? Yep. Roger that.
Howdy guys, Rex here. Today we're gonna to talk about the TACCOM HQ structured barrels. You know, like for the longest time, I think that it was the opinion of most people in the precision rifle community, especially on the manufacturing side, that perfect uniformity always equates to better performance. However, the TACCOM HQ barrel is structured in such a way to add a lot of non-conformities to actually reduce the harmonics and harmonically deaden the barrel. It's a very, very interesting science and I wanna do my best to try to articulate it. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna go over the science and engineering portion, then I'm gonna tell you a story, then I'm gonna tell you a parable because I find this very interesting. It all finally came together like a, t a bunch of uh, tumblers in a lock. And just recently I'm like, okay, I think I know the perfect way to explain this deal and uh, get the point across in a way that'll bear a lot of fruit in a lot of different areas and actually add more to the conversation. So if you look at the, the TACCOM HQ, by the way, TACCOM HQ is that outfit that does the Charlie Terak unit, which is a prism that goes in front of the optic uh, for extreme long range shooting when you're shooting like five, 6,000 yards, okay? You don't have enough elevation in your scope turret to go that far. So basically you have to put a prism in front of there and there's mirrors where you can adjust and get a huge amount of adjustment. And so this is uh, popular with ELR shooters are gonna be familiar with TACCOM HQ. There are certain units that use them, okay, uh, in the military as well. So they have got their, their stuff out there into the real world for testing. Their stuff is all uh, very, very heavy duty and it's uh, proven they've established a good solid relationship in a lot of those worlds as well. Uh, they also produce the Bravo unit, which is a, a offset kind of a, a prism that moves your your view of the target offset to the side of the barrel. A lot of times Mirage comes up off your barrel due to heat, especially when there's no wind, like today when it's like relatively calm. Um, you're gonna have a huge amount of Mirage coming off the barrel and that can really, really screw up your view of the target. So they come up with the Bravo unit that puts it off the side. It works really, really good on the machine guns. And even for ELR shooting where you're shooting so far where your barrel is inclined, you're actually looking at your muzzle through the scope because that's how much adjustment you got going on. And so that was kind of an issue as well for extreme long range shooting was just offset it a little bit off to the side. So TACCOM HQ has been working in the ELR community for a long time. And that's kind of been their center of gravity is working on extreme long range precision equipment and different things like that. When I first saw their structured barrels was back a couple years ago at their facility in Illinois when I was checking out the Charlie Terak. And um, I thought it was a very interesting concept and it actually proves a lot of the concept that we've been talking about forever in the long range 101 series here on uh, the T Bore Source Rex channel, right? And at the Rex Defense uh, RX seminars, we talk a lot about bore axis shifts. Now, one of the things that causes shot dispersion in any weapon or any rifle is what they call bore, bore axis shifts. You can look this up at, you can do a Google Scholar search for like journal articles and engineering papers on what this is, or you can even look at like the US Army 6-40 field manual for artillery. And they have a whole, like a whole chapter dedicated just to this whole thing of bore axis shifts in harmonics. It's not like a pretend deal, it actually exists. And uh, when, the, when the rifle fires, there's a huge shock wave that reverberates all the way to the front of the rifle, all the way to the back, until it is eventually grounded into something and that thermodynamically has to be absorbed into something, usually the shooter or the ground, uh, through the interface of the bipod or the toe support. And so the more harmonics you have, the more movement you have in the bore. Typically the bore is gonna flap. It's going to have a harmonic wave to it, okay? And we've represented this in our bore harmonics video that we've done a long time ago in the 101 series. Um, but there's, it's hard to re uh, represent it three-dimensionally because it's actually happening not just in two dimensions up and down, it's happening three-dimensionally. And it's actually happening in terms of uh, the twist as well. So he, in the helical design is how some of these waves are transferred through the, uh, the rifle. And what happens is when, when your bore is reverberating, every time that bullet exits, it's gonna exit at di a different spot. And that's what causes a lot of shot dispersion. And uh, that's why reloaders have to spend so much time trying to perfectly balance their loads to get them to be like exiting at the exact right time and spot in that harmonic wave to where that bullet is exiting uniformly and then they can get minimal shot dispersion, okay? And so that's why reloaders have to reload, reload so much is because of the bore axis shift of the harmonic wave. If you can eliminate the harmonic wave or deaden it as best as you can, that's like a big deal. 
So classically what you have is a lot of precision shooters create like target rifles and they have very, very large bores. They're rigid. They're, they're built very heavy. And a, a more massive rifle, of course, will deliver you less harmonic reverberation because there's more mass for that wave to be distributed into, right? Well, with TACCOM HQ and the way they structured the barrel was to make a non-uniform like matrix of material that the waves cannot reverberate evenly through. And so we'll go through some of the different features on the barrel, because I know you're gonna be curious about it. Basically what you see is a very large diameter barrel, and it has a bunch of longitudinally drilled holes along the axis of the bore. And then you'll see threading on the outside that's a non-uniform threading on the outside of the barrel. And you're gonna see around the chamber area, there are some dimples or divots there. And it appears cosmetic. It's not cosmetic though. Um, when I first met John, I come to realize he's actually a very, very well experienced optical engineer. And also he worked in other industries on a lot of things having to do with uh, minimizing vibrations and harmonics. Because in other industries, like if you've got harmonic problems, you have machinery that breaks down, you have a lot of expensive equipment that will fail just due to harmonic issues causing a heck of a time. And so John has a lot of experience in understanding that harmonics are not pretend, it's not magic, it's actually a physics thing. And so he went about figuring out how to kill all the harmonics. So the structure barrel has a bunch of uh, deep hole drill patterns around the bore and it resists what they call sinusoidal harmonics via axial compression. Sinusoidal harmonics means harmonic waves that are basically flexing at the, at the same pattern as, as the sine wave, okay? And so if you drill a bunch of holes around the bore, as that bore tries to flex, you're gonna see one side undergoing tension and the other hole on the other side is gonna undergo compression. So that's gonna resist the bore to flex just by drilling a hole through it. Very interesting. And if you have it in a pattern in every direction all the way around it, it resists those sinusoidal harmonics. Very interesting concept there. So basically you got yourself a bunch of opposing forces canceling each other out as the rifle goes off. The structuring is not done in the form of a sleeve. Now, there's a lot of other uh, barrels out there that use other ways, using different materials like carbon fiber or sleeves or other fill type materials to deaden harmonics. The problem with that is you get thermodynamic expansion coefficients. What that means, that's, that's like, that complicates it. Anytime you make it something more complicated, you have to keep track of all that stuff. And as it changes, those co coefficients change and that makes it less uniform in terms of consistency. And so it's done with a monolithic piece of steel. It's all done from one barrel blank. It's not different parts. It's all made from one piece of steel so that you reduce those thermodynamic expansion coefficients. A lot of the heat that is generated actually in the bore, why a rifle barrel gets hot is due to the, the supersonic flexion of the steel on the molecular level, okay? So when you shoot, the, fle the steel actually flexes. There's a lot of really good papers on this written out of Germany and a lot of different outfits now and talk about the shockwave, creates over 50% of the heat. Now that's been debated on exactly, because it's very hard to measure and test. And there's of course a lot of physicists who will um, have different theories on how exactly how that works. But um, the idea there was to keep everything in one piece of steel and so that it's, you have maximum rigidity and it will not. Also another problem that happens harmonically, if you have different parts in different uh, rates of expansion, that creates what, what I call harmonic exacerbation of uh, non-conformities, okay? And so you'll cause stuff to chatter and wiggle where it's not supposed to chatter and wiggle. You want it to be a one solid piece is superior in my opinion. If you look back at the, the breech end of the barrel where the chamber is, there's a bunch of dimples there. And those are cores that are offset perpendicular to the structure to resist harmonics generated from the rifling to the chamber. So that's how they remediated that. Very interesting how they've done it from all different angles to make sure that any one of all three dimensions canceled out those harmonic waves from the source at the chamber in a different direction than they have longitudinally. It's very, very interesting how they kind of have everything balanced out. And obviously, if you look at the design too, you're removing a lot of metal. So you got the rigidity practically of a, a very large diameter barrel because the barrel diameter is still like two inches, but you remove, remove a lot of the weight. Things are not near as heavy as they look like they are. They look huge because they are pretty, they do have a large footprint, but it uh, removes a lot of the weight, which is nice because it's still uh, transportable. Another important thing to look at too is like the threads on the outside of the barrel are done in a certain pattern. They call it the fallen angel pattern. 
and we'll talk about that in more detail in a minute. But in general, harmonics seem to like to propagate efficiently through a more uniform structure. So if you've got a perfectly uniform structure like a bell or a pipe or a, you know, an organ, like a pipe organ, right? Those harmonics reverberate uniformly when it's uniform. If it's interrupted by different geometry, those harmonics don't know where to go. That's how a muffler works. And what we're basically trying to do is quiet down the rifle, if that makes any sense on the harmonic level. So structured barrels basically alter the homogeneity of themselves to eliminate harmonic translation section to section. So when we first got to TACCOM HQ and, and looked at the structured barrels, I thought that was pretty interesting. I think I know what he's going for. We got out to the range and we did a series of tests. Here's the cool thing. Here, here's the testing results. We had a, a series of different rifles out there. I think we had a 300 Norma Magnum. We had a larger caliber, like a 375 shy tac And there was a 260 on an AR-10 platform. And it didn't matter what ammunition you'd run through it, all the rounds would practically go into the same point of impact. And so, for example, on the 260 that we tried, we had four different kinds of ammunition, totally different grains, different brands, different brass, different loads, factory loads, four different kinds, okay? and a 260 caliber bullet, okay? Ranging from light to real heavy. And we just put them all through, holding the exact same point of aim. And what we saw was that the bullets all went in the same spot. I thought that was very, very interesting. It's proof of, proof of concept of how big of a deal harmonic vibrations are when it comes to bore access shifts. And so basically what you have is a system that's not fussy at all with loads. You can pretty much, as long as the load is consistent, it doesn't matter which load it is because you don't have to fine tune it because there's no harmonics to worry about trying to find the node for. There's no node, node to look for when you're loading. So it's actually very cool. Another interesting effect of it was just the increased rigidity of the structure. Barrel is so much more for an equal barrel of equal weight. This is a monolithic design. It is not a two-piece design. We will take a solid, we will drill it. It will be drilled along its length to a position just in front of the chamber. If we look closely here, I think we, we'll be able to see some, some vent holes in the back side. There's one sitting right here. There's a series attached to each of the chambers. Every time the rifle shoots, what we do on the muzzle side is as that chamber column of air is pushed through the muzzle as, this, as the bullet's exiting, it creates an extremely low pressure zone right behind that muzzle. It pulls air through the barrel, changing the air. Then as the bullet passes, it'll actually shove air back through it again off the pressure pulse. So what we're doing is the simple solution to pollution is dilution. We are changing the air within the barrel with every shot. Therefore, we're not just looking for, we're not just relying on radiant heat, we are relying on actual air movement through the barrel. Another thing that you'll notice is that because the rifle is not really allowed to flex because it's all basically deadened initially, starting even at the chamber, and then there's like way less flexion because of the highly increased rigidity. Um, you don't have the same thermal bore erosion dynamics that you have on other barrels. So there is not as much flexion in the steel, so the, the, the heat even produced even at the throat region is drastically reduced. And they've had a lot of other tests done by other professionals who uh, actually have the equipment to check for this and they have bore scopes. They were seeing still like a very small amount of bore erosion that typically you would see on, on a bore with like maybe 50 to 100 rounds through it. And there's a lot of different studies. A lot of guys have been comp comparing notes on how much longer these barrels last because if you reduce the flexion in the barrel, you reduce the amount of heat even produced in the first place. And so if your thermal erosion mechanisms are removed from the equation, you don't embrittle the steel and that throat does not erode near as fast. So it lasts like exponentially longer just because of the structural rigidity of the barrel. Another very interesting point worth mentioning is that when we did our uh, testing in Illinois at the facility there, we actually had a, a rifle stock 
come loose, but actually it revealed uh, something very interesting to me. Like through my experience, if you have a rifle with a loose stock, particularly a bolt action, to where it's coming loose, it has a tremendous effect at 100 yards. But on the structured barrel, it had almost zero noticeable effect. I mean, it was literally still under a half minute of angle in terms of it, how much it was thrown off from a completely loose stock. So again, that uh, reinforces the entire theory from the beginning that it is harmonic reverberations and exacerbations that produce a huge amount of bore axis shifts and actually make the entire system that fussy. Because if you have a huge amount of harmonic reverberation, if parts are flexing, if you have loose stock, loose pistol grip, etc., it's gonna make it 50 times worse. And by reducing the harmonics and deadening the barrel, all of a sudden it gives a huge amount of leeway in all those things. So you don't have to worry about load development near as much. You can get away with a lot in terms of loose components on the rifle even, and it still works amazingly well. So if you look at this in terms of a parable, this is really interesting too. When you have a very, very uniform structure, any tiny little exacerbation of any harmonic problem is reverberated through that uniform structure, okay? Now think of this in terms of sociology, faith, human interactions. And so by creating a structure that's more broken up or more, like think of, think of the Tower of Babel, right? Basically by reducing the uniformity of the, the society and creating like 70 plus languages at the bottom, uh, that reduced a lot of the reverberation from one end to the other. And it actually created a more sound structure and it quieted down the noise. So it's very interesting if you look at it in those ways too. That's something that I woke up thinking the other day, just like really, really interesting. I know I might be mixing that in there for you guys, but like it, it's a, it's a, just a basic principle in the universe that when you have something of complete perfect uniformity, that any problem in that perfect uniformity echoes back and forth much longer. And there's always gonna be some kind of microscopic you know, um, non-conformity or some kind of issue or some kind of machining mark that's gonna cause a harmonic exacerbation in, in any system. Whether that be people, whether that be life, whether that be anything else, okay? And by adding complexity in a structure that's not uniform, that's actually engineered in such a way to cancel that out, okay? Listen carefully, I mean, because this applies to everything. You, that those non-conformities cannot just echo all the way through. It cuts them off. They cancel each other out because you have more structure in the system that is engineered in such a way to dampen that. I know some of you heard what I just said, but I thought that was the cool part. That's the, the thing I rolled over the other night and was thinking, holy smokes, this explains life. <laughs> so I hope they found it interesting. Um, these barrels are uh, a little more expensive, you can do it. And there's different brands. You can go on their website, TACOM HQ, and see what they have to offer. But the barrels, you can use a lot of different, you know, whatever your preference is. The main thing is how it's threaded, chambered, put onto the rifle. And then when you have the uh, structured barrel process done to the blank, um, you end up with a, a very, very, very well-engineered system that harmonically deadens most of your problems. And when you look at the cost of being a, you know, they're, pre, they're like a premium barrel. They're over a thousand dollars typically for like a, a structured barrel. But if you figure out the longevity, the increased lifespan of that barrel, especially when hot cartridges, just by reducing that thermal buildup because of not only the convection cooling, but also just the increased rigidity does not allow the thermal expansion to create that heat. You have a lot longer barrel life because it's not flexing as much. Now think about that one and apply that to other things in physics and the world and life.